All right, guys, this is the video you want to watch if you um, need some help on the study guide. Um, I highly suggest watching this all the way through, making sure you understand every question. That way, when it comes time to the test, you might get a help with maybe a couple bonus things if you watch all the way through. Um, all right, so <clears throat> this first ones are simplifying expressions. And simplifying expressions we did in our 3.1 notes. So if you want to refer back to those, you can. Um, I don't have a calculator like you guys do at home or because I'm at home right now doing this. Um, so I have the more sophisticated, oh, and it tells me my batteries are low. Um, so I probably won't be doing a whole lot with the calculators, but you can follow along with your calculator. Um, so this first one just tells us to simplify the expression. So remember simplifying the expression, all we did was distribute if we needed to, and then we combined like terms. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for parentheses to make sure that there's something that we need to distribute. And in this case, there is. So you can see that there's a set of parentheses here with an eight out in front. And remember that the sign in front of the number is the number that stays with the sign or with the, the sign that stays with the number. So this isn't just an eight, it's a negative eight that we're distributing. Okay, so when I distribute that, I multiply. Remember that the um, operation we use when we're distributing is multiplication. So this 15 that I'm not doing anything with, I'm just gonna bring down. And then I've got negative eight times a positive three X. A negative times a positive gives me a negative and then eight times three is 24, and then we have the x. Okay, now remember, this three has nothing in front of it, so it's positive, but this seven has this negative in front of it, so that is a negative seven that we're multiplying. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and then eight times seven is 56. Then this x I just bring down, so plus x. Okay, now we're gonna combine like terms, so you can do the t chart if you need to, um, we've got X's and numbers, okay? All right, I um, just wanted to make sure that this was in the screen. Okay, it looks good. All right, so I just moved left to right as I put things in the columns they need to be in. So this 15 is a positive, it goes in the number column. So I'll write positive 15. This 24 is a negative and it has an X, so it goes over here, 20, negative 24 X. 56 is a positive, plus 56. And then this x is a positive. Remember, there's a one there when we're adding, so I'm just gonna write plus x, okay? So if you guys need to, this is where you can pull out your calculators. Um, a negative 24 plus a positive one, plus one, is going to give me a negative 23, and then those are the x's. And then 15 plus 56 is 71. And I added those because they're both positive. Okay, so when we rewrite this, remember that unless this last number over here has a negative in front of it, we just add a plus sign in the middle. So that's your answer right there. Okay, um, up next, again, it's simplifying the expression. So we're not solving for anything because there's no equal sign in here, so we can't solve. So we're gonna distribute. This time we're distributing this fraction. And remember again, when we distribute that is multiplication. This fraction, this 4 thirds is negative. This 15 is positive, this 30 is positive, and this five is positive, making sure to kind of pay attention to those signs that are in front. So um, negative 4 thirds times 15, um, huh times 15 is a negative 20, and that's an x. And then a negative 4 thirds times 30 is going to give me negative 40, because a negative, oh yeah, a negative times a positive gives me a negative, and then 4 thirds times 30 <clears throat> is 40. Then this plus five we just bring down, okay? So again, the T chart if you need it. If you don't need it, you don't have to do it, it's fine. Um, sometimes it's just helpful just because sometimes you might miss something that you otherwise can catch when you're doing it this way. So moving left to right, this first term has an X with it and it's a negative, so negative 20X. 
The next term is a negative 40. And then this last term is a positive 5. Okay. So over here, um, negative 20x plus or minus nothing is still negative 20x. And then a negative 40 plus 5 gives me a negative 35. So when we rewrite this for the answer, um, this is the most correct way to write it. Okay, if you write it kind of with a plus sign in there like this, um, that's not incorrect but the top way is just the more correct way. Okay. Um, this one says write the, write the expression for the area of the rectangle below. So if you remember the formula to find the area of a rectangle is length times width. So we've got our length here and our width here. So um, <clears throat> I guess we could write this the other way too. So we're multiplying these two together to get the area. And all it wants us to do is to write the expression, not actually solve for it. Okay, so all we would do is multiply these two together. So I would write that as 12 and then parentheses because the length, or maybe that's the width. The width is this whole amount right here. So 5, 6, X plus 23. Okay. So this just wants an expression, so we're not gonna write equals A or anything like that, because it's just an expression. It doesn't tell us to simplify it, so technically we don't have to simplify it. So this is correct, just like it is, but if you did simplify it, uh, oops, um, multiplying 12 times five, six will give you 10X, and then 12 times 23 is 276. So either one of these would be correct. Okay, all right. Good, good, okay, moving on. I can solve multi-step equations. Let me make sure this is in the screen. Okay, all right. I can solve multi-step equations. It says, which of the following equation below, wait, which of the following shows the equation below after it has been simplified? So here's our equation right here, and then we've got three choices. All we want to know is which one of these is this simplified. Okay, so even though it's got an equal sign in it, we're not actually solving anything. So we're still kind of just on um, distributing and, sim and combining like terms, really. So this side of the equation over here, this 34, there's nothing to combine there. So I know that my answer is going to over here is gonna be 34 equals something. And you can see that all three of these have that option. So we really gotta come over here and combine like terms. There's nothing to distribute because there's no parentheses. So I'm just gonna make a T chart over here. My X is in my numbers. And then move from left to right, starting after the equal sign. So this negative two goes in the number column. This positive nine X goes in the X column. Positive 16 goes there. And then this plus X, remember there's a one there. You can write it if you need to. Okay, now we just need to combine like terms. So nine X plus a one X will give me 10 X. And then a negative two plus 16 will give me a positive 14. So now you just need to see which one of these matches this that we just came up with. So you can see that they all say 34 equals, and then we've got 10x plus 14, which is exactly what we've got there, so that's the answer. Okay, solve the equation. So now we're actually solving. You can see there's an equal sign in here. Remember, you can draw your railroad tracks or just a straight line, whatever you need to write. Um, over here on this side of the equation, there's nothing to combine because we're on, we're still on just 3.2, solving multi-step equations. We're not actually on 3.3 where variables are on both sides yet. Okay, so over here, there's nothing to distribute, but we need to combine some like terms. So I'll just do that right here. So we've got X's and numbers. Okay, so a negative, I should like it put that different that looks really close to that so a negative 4 goes here and then this W remember has a 1 in front of it so that's a plus 1 W plus 17 and then a minus 2 thirds W sorry that is just really close to that I should have written that somewhere else okay now we're going to combine these together um, 
1 minus 2 thirds is going to leave me with 1 third W. And then negative 4 plus 17 is going to leave me with a positive 13. Okay, so this, this simplified becomes this. So 1 third W plus 13 equals 16. Okay, now we're actually going to solve for W. So to do that, I like to circle my W and anything attached to it and get rid of what's outside the circle. So outside the circle is this positive 13. Remember, we need to do the inverse operation. So this is actually adding 13 or it's a positive 13. And the inverse of that would be either to subtract 13 or a negative 13, because those are the same things. What I do to one side, I must do to the other side. So a positive 13 and a negative 13 combined together to make a zero. And over here, all we have is this one third W left. Now here we have 16 minus 13, which is three. Okay, if you're struggling with this right here, if you're thinking that this is 16 minus a negative 13, don't think that way. We're combining these, so by combining, we're adding. So in your calculators, you can always put 16 plus a negative 13 or 16 minus 13. They're the same thing, okay? All right, so far, so good. Moving on to number six. Number six, again, is just solving the equation. Okay, so we've got an equal sign right here. That's where I'm gonna draw my line. Um, my first step always is to check to see if I have anything that needs to be distributed. I have this positive six that needs to be distributed. Again, distribution is multiplication. So multiplying there and to there. Notice how this negative 4x is just kind of sitting out here. We're not doing anything with it, so we're just going to bring it down. Okay, we're going to do our distribution. So it's positive 6 times a positive 4. So positive times positive is a positive. 6 times 4 is 24, and then that one has an x. A positive times a negative will give me a negative. And then 6 times 3 is 18. Okay. Over here on this side of the equation, there's nothing to combine or distribute, so we're just going to rewrite it. Next is combining like terms. Again, some of you can um, use the t-chart if you need to. Um, some of you may be at the point where you don't really need to, but I'm just going to kind of circle them. So I've got an x family here, an x family here, and then I've got just a number family here. And remember, we cannot combine the left and the right side together, so we stop at the equal sign. So when I combine a negative 4x with a positive 24x, I get 20x. And then this negative 18 has nothing to combine with, so it's still just negative 18. Then over here, I'm still at negative 8. Okay, now we're at the point where we need to solve for x, get it all by itself. So circle the x and anything attached to it and get rid of what's outside the circle, which is a negative 18. The inverse of a negative or subtracting 18 is a positive or adding 18. So plus 18, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, plus 18. Negative 18 and positive 18 zero out. And over here, I just have my 20x. That equals Negative eight plus 18 will leave me with 10. Okay, now I gotta get this X alone. I gotta get rid of the 20. Remember the 20 when they're butted up next to each other like this means multiplication. So the opposite or the inverse of multiplication is division. So I divide by the exact number and just the number, not the variable. Okay, so both sides get divided by 20. 20 divided by 20 is one. Not zero, but one. And when we have one X, we just write it as X. And then 10 divided by 20 becomes one half, or you could write it as 0 0.05. This one's more correct, but this one's okay too. Okay. All right. So if you're still listening to this, hopefully, um, when it comes time to the test, there may be a bonus question on there, and the answer to that bonus question might have something to do with maybe math is awesome. I might write that down if I were you guys. Okay, 
So we're going to, first step is to distribute. We're going to distribute this negative 3 eighths. Remember, distribu distribution means multiplication. Okay, so we're multiplying both sides or whatever is inside. Um, um, we're multiplying both sides. Sorry, I keep saying both sides. I don't mean both sides. What both terms that are inside the parentheses by the negative 3 eighths. So first, this x right here has a 1 in front of it. Don't forget that. And it's a positive. So a negative times a positive is going to give me a negative. And then 3 eighths times 1 is just 3 eighths. So it becomes 3 eighths x. Then a negative times a po negative becomes a positive. And... 3, 8, negative 3 eighths times 24 gives me 9. And then this 1x right here just comes down. Okay. Now we're going to combine like terms just like we did last time. So we've got one number family here. And again, if you need to, feel free to do the t-chart and two x family members right there. So when I combine my x families, I've got a negative 3 eighths plus a 1. So um, negative 3 eighths plus 1 gives me positive 5 eighths. And then this plus 9 only has itself to combine with, so plus 9. And Jeez, I wrote that way over. And that still just equals 19 because over here on this side of the equation, there's nothing to combine, distribute, nothing over there. Okay. So now we're going to circle our X and anything attached to it. And we're going to get rid of what's outside the circle first. So outside the circle is a positive 9. The inverse or the opposite of adding or a positive is negative or subtraction, which are the exact same things. Okay. Plus 9 minus 9 makes a 0. And all I'm left with is 5 eighths x equals. And then a positive 19 combined with a negative 9 or 19 minus 9 is 10. Okay. And then remember when um, this 5 eighths is multiplying that x. So the inverse of multiplication. Okay. The inverse of multiplication is division, but when we have fractions, I mean, your calculator will divide by 5 eighths. You can do that, that's fine. But for those of you who remember, actually to divide by fractions, we actually um, change a sign and then flip it, right? So we're actually gonna be over here multiplying by 8 fifths. So 8 fifths times 10 is 80 divided by five and 80 divided by five is 16. Now your calculator will do that for you guys. You guys don't have to do that in your head, but this ends up being, oops, I should have written it down. So basically what we did was we, um, oh, I should, okay, we'll just say we multiplied by the inverse. But your calculator will do the division. All right, that is 3.2 and 3.1. Up next, hmm. Focus. Okay. Number eight. The area of the rectangle shown is 138 square inches. So it's saying that the area is actually 138 um, inches squared. Okay. We want to write and then solve an equation to find the value of X. Remember that the area of, to find the area of a rectangle is length times width. Okay. So just kind of like we did that one on the other side. Remember, we just multiplied these together. Now this time we're gonna actually have it equal the area. So my area is 138, right there, and that equals my length times my width. So 12 times 4x minus six. You guys see I'm eating cheese, I'm hungry. Okay, there's our equation, it's just that easy. Now we need to actually solve it by following the steps that we did in 3.2 because you can see this is variable just on one side. So it's not like we have to um, worry about 3.3 yet. So first thing we need to do is distribute. So this side stays the same. I'm going to write this over here so I have some, well, I'll just write tiny. 138 equals 12 times a positive times a positive is going to give me a positive. And then 12 times 4 is 48x. 
and, and positive times a negative will give me a negative. And 12 times 6 is, why don't I know that off the top of my head, 72. Okay. Now, if they are more comfortable, you can move this equals 138 to the other side if you need to. That's fine. I'm just going to leave it. Circle my variable and anything attached to it. Get rid of what's outside my circle, which is a negative 72. The inverse of a negative 72 is a positive 72. So I'm going to add 72 to both sides. Go zero out. I get 48x equals, and 138 plus 72 is 210. Then I got to get rid of this 48. 48 is multiplying the x, so I need to do the inverse, which is to divide. These equal 1, and 1x one is just x. So 210 divided by 48 is 4.375 according to my calculator. And then this is in inches, so you should label with inches. Okay. Now remember, you can check this. So I'll show you guys, since it doesn't have a fraction, because this calculator doesn't work really well with fractions. I mean, it, it does, but yours is way easier. So since this one doesn't have a fraction, I'll kind of show you how to check your answer, just in case you don't remember. So we want to use the side that has the X in it. So we're going to ignore this for a minute. We're going to type in exactly what shows here. So 12, open parentheses, 4, and then instead of X, I'm going to put in what X equals. So times, and then 4.375. Whoa, what happened there? That should be a point. Oh. 375, I hit negative or something, and then minus 6, close parentheses. If I hit enter and it equals 138, I've done it right. I've done it right. Yay. Now that shouldn't surprise you guys. I'm your math teacher. Okay. All right. Hopefully you're still watching because you might hear another key code word for a bonus on the test. Okay, number nine. Um, I can solve equations with variables on both sides. This is from your 3.3 notes. Okay, this is where we where it gets a little tricky. All right, here we go. So, equal sign, line down the middle. Okay, um, distribute. Remember, one side at a time. So I'm going to do my distribution and my combining like terms on the left, and then I'm going to do it to my right, and then I won't get them mixed up. So I'm just going to ignore, in fact, here, I have a little sticky note, and this might be helpful for you guys. I'm just going to ignore that side for now. Okay, I'm just going to do this side. Just like an expression, 3.1 notes, right? So distri distribution first. Well, there's nothing to distribute here, so all I have to do is combine like terms. I've got an X family member here and an X family member here. I've got a number family member here, making sure I circle or whatever the signs in front of them. Okay, so when I combine a 7x and a 1x, I get an 8x. And then this, this number family guy is all alone. All he is is a negative 4. Okay, that side's nice and neat. Now, let's do this side. All right, nothing to distribute. Um, I've got an x family member here. I've got a number family member here and a number family member here. All right, so let's combine these. So nothing to combine with my X family member other than itself. So, and it's a positive. I'm not going to write plus 13 since I'm writing it out in front. Um, if it was a negative, I would take the negative, but I'm not doing that here. Um, 13X and then a negative 1 and a positive 7 combined together will give me a positive 6. Now we can remove our sticky note. Okay. Now this is where this is the tricky step. This is where we have to move the variable from one side to the other by um, zeroing it out on one side. It doesn't matter what side you pick. Um, you guys are more comfortable moving them to the left most times, so that's what I'm going to do. If you prefer to uh, um, ignore negatives, like to not have a negative, then in this case you'd want to move it to the right. So I have a positive 13 here. Remember we said it was a positive from up here. Its inverse is a negative. So I'm going to subtract 13x here, subtract 13x here, or I'm just taking over a negative 13x. A positive and a negative 13 make a zero, and all I have over here is six. 
this negative four just comes down because I don't have anything to combine with it. Notice when I did this, I took the X with me. Remember when we divide like up here, I only divided by the number attached to X. That's because I'm trying to get X alone. In this case, I'm trying to get rid of all of these X's. So I take the X with me, which means I line it up under the term with the X on the other side. I can't line it up with this four. It doesn't have an X. Okay, so when I combine these, remember we're actually combining, which is addition. So an 8x plus a negative 13x is going to give me a negative 5x. Now we're back to just solving multi-step equations, um, which we've done second, I mean, sorry, sixth, seventh, and now eighth grade. So these should be really easy. Circle the variable and anything attached to it. Get rid of what's outside the circle. So in this case, I need to add four to both sides. Okay, those zero out, I'm left with a negative 5x equals, and 6 plus 4 is 10. Hold on. Oh, the joys of making a video at home. Okay, now I need to get rid of the negative 5 that's attached to x. To do that, I'm going to divide by the exact number that's being multiplied, which is a negative 5. Gosh, I really needed more room here. I need to write smaller. 10 divided by negative 5 will give me a negative 2, and that's what x equals. Okay, again, we can double check this. Double checking these is a little different because we have to check one side at a time. So wherever my x is, I'm gonna put in a negative two. So seven times negative two minus four plus a negative two. When I get enter, I get this side equals a negative 20. Now all I have to do is see if this side equals negative 20 when I use that same number. So I've got, clear that out, negative one, plus 13 times negative 2 plus 7. They both equal negative 20, so negative 2 is the correct answer. Okay? All right, if you're still listening, um, for question number 5 on the test, get rid of choices C and D, and it should be, the answer should be A or B, just so you know. Okay, here we go. Um, we're going to draw our line. Um, again, we're gonna, I'm going to use my sticky note. Maybe I'll give you guys sticky notes during the test so that you can do this. Um, I'm going to combine my like terms on this side. So I've got one term with an X, one family member of X's, and two family members of just numbers. So when I combine these together, I always write my x first, so I have a negative 0.5x. Oops, I didn't mean to write that in orange. I know that's hard to see. Negative 0.5x. And then a negative 3 plus a positive 13 gives me a positive 10. And then this side, if you look over here, it doesn't have anything to combine. So we just write that, rewrite it. I know some of you don't like to rewrite it just because you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much work, but it, it keeps things nice and neat and organized, so I would do it if I were you guys. All right, I'm going to move my x from the right to the left. This is a positive 0.3x, so the inverse of that is a negative 0.03x. What I do to this side, I have to do to this side. These zero out. A negative 0.5x plus a negative 0.3x will give me a negative 0.08x. No, nope, 0.8x, sorry. And then the 10 just comes down, and that equals 6.2. Goodness. Okay. Circle the x and anything attached to it. Get rid of what's outside the circle. The inverse of a positive 10 is a negative. So subtract 10 from both sides. V zero out. All I have left here is my negative 0.8x. And then remember this is kind of like we're adding these. So 6.2 plus a negative 10 or just 6.2 minus 10 gives you a negative 3.8. And then we divide, gosh, sorry. Gosh, I ran out of room. Okay, um, I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 0 0.08, divide by negative 0 0.08. Um, negative 3.8 divided by negative 0.8 gives me 4.75.
Note to self, don't write that big next time. Okay, let's double check this just to make sure, just because I'm kind of thinking, what the heck, a decimal? Would Miss Sherritt really give us a decimal? Negative three minus 0 0.5 times 4.75 plus 13. 7.625, okay? Then 0 0.3 times 4.75 plus 6.2. I guess I did. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done this worksheet. Okay, so yeah, that's the answer. Awesome. Okay, down here, still solving with variables on both sides. Okay, I'm going to try and write a little smaller so hopefully you guys can see this. All right, um, take my sticky note, cover this side of the equation so I don't worry about it. Um, first step is to distribute. So I've got parentheses here. I need to distribute this negative 5 into here and into here. Okay, this 3 that I kind of covered up, I'm just going to rewrite. Negative 5 times a positive 1. Well, negative times a positive gives me a negative. And then 5 times 1 is 5, and then add the x to it. And then a negative times a positive is a negative again. And 5 times 4 is 20. Now we want to combine like terms before we go to the other side. So I've got a number family there and a number family there. And then I've got an X family member here. So when I rewrite this, I always write my X family first. So negative 5X. And then 3 minus 20 is a negative or minus 17. Okay. Now let's cover up this side and do this one. So I've got to distribute this 8 into this set of parentheses here. A positive times a positive is a positive. 8 times 2 is 16x. A positive times a negative is a negative. 8 times 3 is 24. Nothing to combine there, so I'm just going to rewrite it so it's down here on the same line as this one. So I've got everything lined up instead of all off and weird. So now I'm going to move um, my x's to the left-hand side. I need to do that by zeroing this one out. So the, to zero out a positive 16, I would do a negative 16x, making sure I take the x with me and line up under the correct terms. These zero out, and all I have left is a negative 24. Over here, this negative 17 just comes down. And then a negative 5 plus a negative 16 will give me a negative 21x. Circle my variable and anything attached to it. Get rid of what's outside the circle. So a negative 17 is outside the circle. To zero it out, I would add 17 to both sides. Okay, these zero out. Negative 21x just comes down. And then a negative 24 plus 17 will give you a negative seven. Okay, some of you guys are going to think, oh, because seven's smaller, I divide by it, but you don't. You're still dividing by this number over here by x. So negative 21, divide by negative 21. So these become one. So x equals, a negative and a negative will give me a positive. And then seven and 21, basically you're just simplifying that fraction to one third. Or if you did, if you actually did in your calculator, if you did negative seven divided by negative 21, you'd get 0.3333333. Okay. All right. Next, describe how you can tell whether an equation has one, infinite, or no solutions. This is from 3.4 notes. Okay. So if an equation has one solution, Remember, it's going to have x equals a number, just like all of these ones that we've just done have had. That, those were all one solution ones. If it has infinite solutions, it's going to have, when you get down, remember you're gonna have no variable left, and then you're gonna end up with some number and it's going to equal the same number. It's gonna be like two equals two, seven equals seven, something like that. If it's a no solution, again, you're going to have no variable left at the end. It's going to zero out on both sides. And what you're going to end up with, though, is some number, and it's not going to equal the number on the other side. So, like, the, for example, this one right here would be something like 2 equals 2. 
This one's going to look like something like 2 equals negative 3, where they don't actually equal each other. Okay, so that's the difference between an infinite and a, a no solution. Neither of them have a variable left, like the one solution does. But if it's infinite, if every number can be a solution, then it's going to end up with a number equals the same number. If no number is a solution, then it's going to be some number which doesn't equal the other number on the other side. Okay? All right. Just a couple more, and I know this video is super long, but hopefully it's worth it in the end. So we want to write and solve an equation for the following. Um, Marshall, oh, and this is for honors only, so you don't even have to worry about these ones. So we're doing one last question. Marshall earns a salary of $36,000, and each year he receives a $4,000 raise. So I'm going to use Y to equal the years. Okay. So $4,000 times however many years he's been working plus his base salary of $36,000. And then it says Jim earns a salary of $51,000 and each year he receives a $1,500 raise. So his is $1,500 times the number of years plus $51,000. How many years will it take before Jim and Marshall earn the same salary? You just set them equal to each other and then solve for Y. Um, I'm going to do it really quickly off camera, and then I'll just come back with the answer. All right, so you can see how I solved it right there. I just, like, as if those were X's and moved things like I was supposed to. And in six years, they would be earning the same salary. All right, guys, hopefully this was worth it. See you later.